Stuka Joe here, and today we're going to play one full game of The Battle of Crete 1941, published by World at War magazine. This is in issue 47. I did an unbagging of this game uh, some months ago. And uh, this is a solitaire game where the player takes control of the German forces invading the island of Crete. And the artificial intelligence system with the game takes control of the Allies. This game to win, uh, the Germans must score 125 victory points or more. And let's see how victory points are awarded. If we destroy the Cree Force Corps headquarters, we get four victory points. Any other Allied headquarters eliminated, two victory points. And for each uh, Allied unit eliminated, and all Allied units are one-step units, we receive one victory point. Now, we can lose victory points, too. For each of our airborne units eliminated, we lose three. For each of our air units eliminated, two. And for any other German unit that is eliminated, two victory points we lose. Each reduced airborne unit, we also lose two. And each reduced German unit or any other German unit that is reduced, we lose one victory point. Now, if we capture, capture King George, it's not stated there, we get 10 victory points. And for air attacks on the Royal Navy, uh, victory points vary as per the naval attack outcome table. Now, at the end of the game, we can also uh, win or lose victory points for each airfield that we occupy we get 10 victory points for each port four and for each allied unit still on the map at the end of the game which is the seventh turn we lose one victory point and if at the end of the seventh turn there has been no allied evacuation triggered it's an automatic german defeat let's go to set up victory points start at zero and the german uh, flieger corps 11 staff points uh, they also start at zero. The Allied command marker starts at a high level, and that is at 12, and the Royal Navy starts at 9. And the Allied evacuation marker starts the game face down. No evacuation. Now we take all Allied headquarters, artillery, coast artillery, and anti-aircraft units, and we uh, flip them face down. And what I'll do is give them a good mix. Now we've placed the 10 units on the ports and airfields on the map. So each of these spaces has either a headquarters, anti-aircraft, coastal artillery, or artillery unit. Now these remaining units are supposed to be placed in the Allied Reserve Box, where we'll also place the other allied units, which are just regular ground units, mix them up and they would be placed on the map. Now, to make this process easier, I'm going to place these units together with the other allied units in an opaque cup. And from there, I will draw units and place them face down on the map. So now I have uh, all units remaining to be placed are in an opaque cup. So now, in each airfield zone, plus Cania and Suda ports, which we see here, we are to place three units in addition to the uh, units that have already been placed there. And now we place two additional units in each remaining port. And now we place one unit in each of the remaining spaces on the map. So we placed all the units that can be placed at the beginning of the game on the map. We have several sectors, the La Sithi sector, the Iraklion sector, then we have a Retimo sector, and the other sector is Cania. The remaining units that uh, did not make it on the map are placed in the Allied Reserves, face down. And here are the remaining units in the Allied Reserve Box. So we've set up the Allied units already in Crete. 
We don't know the identity of any of them. Now let's take a look at our units. Our starting ground units begin in the German ground units in Greece box. And there we have the units of the 7th Airborne Division. And those are the Elite Sturm Regiment and the 1st, 2nd and 3rd Regiments of the Division and also support units which are mostly anti-tank, heavy weapons and engineers. Also in the box we have the 5th German Mountain Division with its 85th, 95th and 100th Regiments. And there's also the 141th Regiment of the German 6th Mountain Division and units of the Italian Regina Infantry Regiment and finally some assorted independent units like anti-tank and tank companies. The turn marker begins in the number 1 turn space and the game lasts 7 turns. Now, each turn in this game consists of 19 phases and I'm not going to explain each one of the 19 phases now because we'll never start with the game. What I've done is I've uh, made some cards which are not really cards. These are uh, printed on paper and I laminated them because I'm really not going to be shuffling them at all. These are cards, one card for each one of the phases of the game and uh, the phases in blue correspond to German phases, those in brown correspond to allied phases and the last one is the end of turn phase which is neutral. So what I'll be doing is I will be using these cards to guide myself through each one of the phases of the game. But these cards don't come with the game. I will upload the card images to uh, this game's um, page at Board Game Geek for those interested in using them. And unless specified otherwise, I'm going to be using blue dice for the Germans and red dice for the Allies. So we start with the first phase of the game, and that is the Fliegerkorps 11 staff points phase. Uh, we gain Fliegerkorps points equal to the roll of 1d6, and these points can be used to enhance other actions that we can take during the game. So we roll 1d6 and it is a meager 1. And we record this whopping point here on the German 11 Flieger Corps staff points available track. Next phase, the German intelligence phase. And we can spend our only Flieger Corps point to roll to see if we can uh, reveal units, allied units in a space. Uh, in a zone, one to three, and we can reveal them four through six, and it's no effect, whatever that means. I'll fix that. Or we can try to uh, reveal units in the Allied Reserve display. In that case, we have to subtract one from the die roll, and that is the unit number of units revealed there. But that would spend our only Flieger core point. So it would really be nice to know what the Allies have in those juicy stacks there in Suda. Kania, and uh, maybe even uh, Malem airfield, but with one Flieger Corps point, uh, we can only try to see what's in one of those spaces. And as a first turn strategy, it may be a good idea in this first turn not to send our airborne troops in, but to use our air force to soften up uh, positions that we want to take with our airborne forces. So bearing in mind that that will be our strategy, I will uh, attempt and use that Flieger Corps point to see what the Allies have in the Suda space. So we roll 1d6, we need a 1 to 3. But the result is a 4, no effect, so uh, that point was wasted. And now our Flieger Corps points are down to 0. So on to the next phase, and this is the German refit phase, where we can spend uh, one Flieger Corps point and uh, we can refit a ground unit, that is a unit that is reduced and flip it to full strength, but we don't have any Flieger Corps points, and fortunately we don't have any units to refit because all are at full strength. 
So we go to the next phase and this is the German staging phase. And here we can do three things in any order. Transfer German ground units from a staging area to another staging area box. Commit German air units to missions or transfer German ground and air units in Greece to airborne air landing and amphibious boxes and vice versa. So we have here our units that uh, can be moved to staging boxes and let's look at the staging boxes there's a box in each sector for airborne units to be airdrop and then we have units to uh, be brought onto Crete by air landing and those are units that will come through the airfields and for the purpose of this game airfield spaces need, need not to be solely controlled by German units but there has to be German units at least in the space and they can be together with the allied units fighting it out and they can still come in and then we have uh, uh, staging boxes for units that are gonna come uh, through the sea and this is a very dangerous proposition because, because the, our Luftwaffe has to take care first of the Royal Navy and reduce its power significantly so that those uh, units and previously transported have a fighting chance. Here are our allied units, Luftwaffe available units in Greece. Each unit has two numbers. The leftmost number is the strategic combat factor and the rightmost number the tactical combat factor. The strategic combat factor is used when our units are attacking allied morale by placing the units in this box or conducting attacks on the Royal Navy. Attacks on the Royal Navy are important in order to give our amphibious uh, troops a chance to land uh, and the units have an also a number to the right which is the tactical combat factor which is used in attacks against allied units in Crete. So now we assign our air units to particular missions. We've assigned two fighter units and three bomber units to the Cania sector and also the same allotment, two fighter units, one ME-109 and one ME-110 and three bomber units including one Savoia Marchetti 79 Italian bomber unit to the Retimo sector. And then We've assigned also three Stuka units to the Allied morale attacks and three Stuka units to Royal Navy attacks. The Germans have uh, limitations on the number of airborne units they can airdrop each turn. Each airborne unit has to be assigned to one of these air transport units. And in the case of the Leer tra air transport unit, it is a special gliders unit. It can transport two airborne units but it has the downside that once it is used it is removed from the game so it's a one-shot deal with the lair unit and uh, transport units if they take a hit they are flipped to their reduced side and if they take another hit they are eliminated but for now it's seven transport units including the lair unit and we don't have to assign all units to staging areas, we'll assign some of our 7th uh, Airborne Division units. Okay, we are assigning the Sturm Regiment to the Cania sector. And four of our air transport units, including the Lair unit, which is transporting two airborne units of that regiment. And we're assigning the 1st Airborne Regiment to the Retimo sector with three transport units transporting all of the regiment except for one battalion. In the Iraklion sector we will be dropping later the second airborne regiment. And for now those are the units that we will be committing to staging boxes. Notice that we haven't committed any of the 5th Mountain Division units and still there's another regiment of the 7th Flieger uh, Airborne Division still uh, not committed that we will leave as a reserve and we will airdrop on any sector that uh, we've seen good progress on. So we move on to the next phase and this is the German tactical movement phase. This won't apply because this is tactical movement that is ground movement on Crete 
for, uh, this is the phase where we use move our ground units, but we don't have any ground uh, units on Crete. They can normally move two uh, zones and they must stop if they enter an enemy occupied zone. If they're already in an, in an enemy occupied zone, they can't move. And if we spend a Flieger Corps point, we can add one movement allowance to the units that start in the same zone as a headquarters. So now let's go to the next phase. And the next phase is the German strategic air attack phase. Here our air units in unit mission boxes may attack allied morale and we can conduct attacks on the Royal Navy and that's what we're going to do now. We have three Stuka units assigned to allied morale attacks. Morale attacks are a way of reducing the allied command level or allied command index. It begins at its highest level at 12 and uh, it has this number 3 associated, meaning that as long as it's at a high level, as shown here, there will be three die rolls made each turn on the Middle East command events table. And uh, those events tend to be favorable to the Allies. So uh, by reducing Allied morale, there are less of those die rolls made and less favorable events for the Allies. And here we see the Middle East Command Events Table. We won't go into the specific events yet. There is a specific phase for rolling for this, these events. For now, we will roll to see if uh, we reduce Allied morale. Now, for each of our attacking units, we roll 1d6. And if the die roll is equal or less than the unit's strategic combat factor, we reduce Allied Command by 1. But if the die roll is a 6, we reduce the attacking unit, and that is a way of reflecting the anti-aircraft fire that uh, these units are risking. So we roll three D6s, and the rolls are two, three, and four. So uh, the twos and threes hit. So there's two hits, and the allied command level is now at 10. Now we resolve attacks on the Royal Navy, and we have three Stuka units. Attacks on the Royal Navy are resolved similarly. We roll 1d6 for each attacking unit, and if uh, the die roll is equal or less to the unit's strategic combat factor, we reduce the Royal Navy index by 1, and for each hit we roll on the naval attack outcome table. But if we roll a 6, we have to reduce the attacking units. So we roll 3d6s, a 1, a 3, and a 5. Two hits on the Royal Navy. And we see here that the Royal Navy starts at 9, and it receives 2 hits. And it's reduced now to 7. And because we obtained 2 hits on the Royal Navy, we roll 2 D6s and uh, consult the result here in the Naval Attack Outcome Table. And the die roll was a double 1. So it's 2 destroyer damage results, no victory points are gained. Oh, so far nothing to write home about. Now we go to the seventh phase, the German tactical air movement phase. We move German air combat units to zones in assigned sectors, which contain allied units and air transport and transported ground units in staging areas to their landing zones. So we start by assigning to specific zones the air units in the Kania sector. And we'll see attacks on uh, Kania as well as Suda, and they will be accompanied by fighters just in case the Royal Air Force shows up there. And we have an attack by this uh, Junkers 88 unit here at Prison Valley. Now we place the air units to attack at the Retimo sector. We have the Italian bomber unit attacking Mount. Ida, and we have German bombers escorted by fighters attacking Retimo Port and Retimo Airfield. Now note that we didn't move any German air transports with their ground units to any uh, landing zones because we want to soften up the uh, defenses first. So now we go to the next phase. 
and this is phase eight, German amphibious movement phase. We can move our German units assigned to amphibious move to a port, but we don't have any. We uh, haven't assigned them yet, so we skip this phase. On to the ninth phase, and we have the Allied Reveal phase. We reveal all Allied units in zones containing German ground or air units. We begin by revealing the Allied units which are about to be attacked by our air units in the Cania sector. And there is only one anti-aircraft unit in Suda. The other units are not anti-aircraft units, so that is not bad at all. Now we reveal the allied units in the Retimo sector. There is one artillery unit at uh, Retimo port. At Retimo airfield, there is a headquarters and a deception marker and another deception marker at Mount Ida. And deception markers, at the instant that they are revealed, they are replaced in the reserve box. So we remove them and we place them in the reserve box. And since we will be drawing from the reserve box units to be placed back on the, back on the map, we will place all the units in the reserve box in this opaque container. So we'll use the opaque container as the allied reserve box and the two deception markers will go in there. Now on to the next phase and this is the allied anti-aircraft phase and uh, we have to fire allied anti-aircraft units at German air units in the same zone. We roll 1d6 if the die roll is equal or less than the anti-aircraft combat factor, we reduce the German air unit. The roll is a 6, so the anti-aircraft fire misses. And there are no more Allied anti-aircraft units to fire. On to phase 11, which is the German tactical air attack phase. Now we execute combat for all our air units against allied ground units in the zones. Each attacking air unit rolls 1d6 and if we roll equal or less to the air unit's combat factor, that is the tactical combat factor, we inflict a hit but if we roll a 6 we have to reduce our attacking air units on account of anti-aircraft fire. So we will start from west to east, starting with the Junkers 88 attacking at Prison Valley. Uh, we have a tactical rating of 4, so we need 4 or less. And the roll is a 6, so uh, anti-aircraft fire reduces our unit. And now we proceed with the attack of our Heinkel 111 unit against the uh, Allied units at the port of Cania. We need 4 or less. And the roll is a 1, so we hit one of the defending units, and we can choose which one it is. And we can choose our target, so of course we're going to choose the 7th uh, uh, Corps, actually. So, we can choose our target, and of course we're going to select this headquarters, which is the 7th I believe this is the Cree Force headquarters. Almost certain, but I'm not going to start flipping the other units to find out. So that unit is destroyed. And that is the Cree Force headquarters. So uh, by special rule, that the unit, when it is eliminated, reduces the Allied Command Index by 3. And now it is at 7, and it is uh, morale is at medium and we place the eliminated unit in the eliminated allied units box now we roll uh, for the uh, Junkers 88 attacking Suda port we need four or less and the roll is a one so we will destroy that pesky anti-aircraft unit that is the end of the air attacks in the Kenya sector the Cree force Headquarters, elimination, uh, gains us four victory points, plus one for the anti-aircraft unit eliminated, 
and because our Junkers 88 unit was reduced, we lose a victory point. So the net gain in this uh, air attack over Kania is plus four victory points. Now we proceed with the air attack against uh, Retimo port, and we need three or less. The roll is a four, and that's a miss. Now we resolve the attack against Retimo airfield. We need three or less. This time the roll is a three, so we eliminate the ten New Zealand Brigade headquarters. Now the last attack. Well, there's no attack on Mount Ida because there was a deception marker there. And that is the end of the German tactical air attack phase. And all our air units return to the Luftwaffe available in Greece box. And we have one of them which is reduced. Now to the next phase. And this is the German airdrop and landing phase. We don't have any units on transports uh, set to be uh, airdropped on their zones or air landing on airfields. So we skip this phase. We go to the next phase. The German ground combat phase. We don't have any ground units on Crete, so there's no ground combat, so we also skip this phase. Next phase, the Allied Middle East command phase, and we have to make a Middle East uh, command events check, and we make a number of checks equal to the number below the current Allied command index. Allied command is at 7, the number below is 2, so we make two of these checks. So we roll twice on this table and uh, an event can only occur once and we implement each result before rolling for the next. So we roll 2d6, the result is a 5. So we roll one die and we pick that number of units from the Allied reserve box and for each released unit we roll on the random locations table to see in what zone that unit is placed. So we roll 1d6. Ouch! Five units will be placed on the map. So we roll for five units and each time we roll 2d6 to determine where each unit is placed face down and we pick from the allied reserve box. First die roll is a six at Malemi airfield. So we place an additional unit there. Now there are five units there. We roll for the second of five units. The roll is a nine. Iraklion airfield. And the New Zealand Brigade headquarters is placed in the eliminated allied units box, raising the victory point level by two, and it is now at six. And we place a new unit at Iraklion airfield and there's five units there. Now to the third of five units and the roll is an eight at Retimo airfield. That's the zone where we eliminated the New Zealander headquarters. Now there's a new unit there. Now to the fourth of five units another eight. Again Retimo airfield. Now there's four units there. And now for the last of five units, and the roll is a 10, Retimo Town. And now there's four units there. And now to the second dice roll. The roll is a 9, Allied Offensive at Hiraklion. And we follow the Allied Offensive procedure. And we have to move all units, Allied units, adjacent to a port or an airfield into the port or airfield. And in the uh, Iraklion sector, there's the Iraklion port and airfield. This unit is adjacent to the port, so it moves to the port. And this unit here is adjacent to the airfield, so it moves to that space. And there is no other movement. If there would have been any uh, Allied uh, Axis combat units in the uh, spaces with Allied units, the Allies would have counterattacked. But there are no German or uh, Axis forces in the Iraklian sector, so there's no ground combat, no counterattack. 
So now we go to the next phase, and this is the Allied counterattack phase. But there are no uh, German units on the ground in Crete, so uh, this phase is skipped. So the next phase, Allied command adjustment phase, and we have to raise the Allied command level by one for each airfield and port that are Allied controlled or disputed. And all ports and airfields are still uh, controlled by the Allies. So that's a total of 10 between ports and airfields. So we increase the Allied command level accordingly, but it cannot go beyond level 12. And the Allied command level returns now back to level 12. Now to the next phase, and it is the Allied evacuation check phase. We check for uh, evacuation, and it is triggered in two ways, failing an Allied command check, and now we would make a command check, and we roll 2d6, and if the die roll is higher than the command level, there would that would trigger an evacuation. The problem is the command level is 12, so there's no way of rolling higher than that, and the command level is not at level 1, so we skip this phase. Next phase is the Allied evacuation execution phase, but because there's no Allied evacuation, we also skip this phase. And now for the last phase of the game. Uh, this is not turn 7, this is turn 1, so we advance the turn marker to the next turn. And now we move on to turn number 2. This is the situation at the end of the first turn. No airdrops or air landings have occurred. We uh, sent our bombers to soften up the uh, positions and to actually uh, do some reconnaissance because by attacking we get to flip the Allied units so we know what they have basically around Retimo Airfield and Retimo Port as well as Suda and Kania. We still uh, have no idea what they have in Iraklion Airfield in Port and Malemi Airfield. Victory point score is currently at 6 and the Royal Navy level at 7, Allied Command level at 12. Our only losses is one Junkers 88 unit which was reduced. So stick around in the next episode we'll play turns 2 and 3 of Crete 1941, Operation Mercury. Thanks for watching.